Hello, my name is Kieran Sapien, and this is White Knight VFX Arnold Training 101. And this is a basic introduction to Arnold and how you can use it inside of Maya to achieve some really realistic results. So, just to make sure that you have Arnold installed correctly, you just need to come down to Windows, Settings Preferences, and your Plugin Manager. And then just make sure that your mtoa.mml is installed and loaded. So just double make sure these are ticked. And if it's not loaded, just go to support.solidangle.com and um, they'll provide some tips on how to actually install it correctly. Alright, so here's our default scene. And let's just go up to our render settings and ensure that our Arnold renderer is working. So you can see that the software, the Maya software, is that's what's being used currently. So let's just go to our drop down and here you can see our Arnold renderer. So let's just click this and that will enable the Arnold renderer. We'll cover this in more depth in future tutorials but this is just a simple introduction so let's just close this out and we're just going to worry about creating our first scene. Now let me just make you aware of some really important features of the Arnold renderer. There's the interactive render button up here that if you click it will update the scene pretty much in real time but you can't see much happening right now but I'll show you that later so let's just close this for now okay and let's just drop down a nice ground plane and hit 5 just to go on the shaded and let me just draw your attention to our attributes editor over here um, with Arnold being installed you can now have access to a whole Arnold um, attribute editor where you can come and access and change a lot of the settings for Arnold such as displacement, volume, subdivision and even change it to opaque if you're doing water simulations for example. But we'll cover this when we start to create some materials and in further um, tutorials. Alright so let's just drop down a nice sphere hold shift so it snaps to the plane and hold shift and drop in this cube. Alrighty, so now we just want to load up the hypershade so we can put some materials on this. So just come down to Arnold, click your shader, and just click the AI shader twice because we want two materials. And let's just call the first one Chrome and the second one a blue mat. And let's drop the chrome onto the sphere by middle mouse clicking. So you can middle mouse click and drop. And let's just do this one a different way. Select the cube, right mouse click, and say assign material to selection. So now it's assigned the blue material that way. So that way you can select a lot of materials um, at once. Alrighty. Okay, let's just close out of our hypershade. Click on the chrome. And let's just make this a chrome material. And this is the AI standard shader so there's a lot of different options in here but we'll cover that in future tutorials so just turn your specular all the way up and sorry turn your weight all the way down and now you have a perfect chrome ball and oh sorry just turn your roughness down as well that should be on zero and let's just change our blue mat to a nice bluey color and let's just turn the specular up a little bit and it gives you a little handy live preview up here so you can kind of get a rough idea of what's happening Alright, so now we have two Arnold materials. Let's just drop one in for the plane. So if you want to bring up the hypershade quickly, just hold space, window, rendering, and hypershade. So our two materials are there. Let's just go to shader, AI standard, and let's just drop this on the ground plane. And then we have a simple material for our ground, ground mat. Alright, so let's just scale up our ground a little bit more. And probably the most common light you'll be using for Arnold will be your area light. I think it's the most um, controllable light. Either area or spot. They're very, both my favorite lights to use. But let's just start off with our area light. So it's always a bit hard to kind of figure out how to position lights in 3D space. If you kind of look like this, you're like, oh, where am I aiming? A handy trick you can go is hold the space bar panels and look through selected. Or just release that, or you could come up to panels or look through selected here. And so you can see I accidentally rotated it, so let's just reset our rotation for our light. 
and now we're actually looking through the light so you can come in and really position it how you want to position it around a scene but I just want to do a drop down kind of key light alright so let's just go back to our perspective view and now you can see that we've positioned our light perfectly in 3D space and let's go back to this interactive renderer that I was talking about at the start and you're like okay well, I'm not really seeing much right now but this is where you need to come into your Arnold attribute editor. So, like the other shapes, your lights have their own Arnold renderer um, attribute. So, as we increase the exposure of our light, let's pull back our render, you can see that we're actually getting some nice realistic lighting in our scene. Now, one of my favorite features about the area light is this feature called normalize. So, if I just turned it off now, it's going to look really overexposed because this light is actually going off its shape rather than its exposure. I mean, you can still increase the exposure to create high density light, but let's just say we turn it right down to like maybe a flat two. But if you notice, we scale this one up now, it's actually increasing the light. But if we turn off normalize, no matter what we do to the scale, it's not going to change anything. So it just makes it really handy to kind of dial in with a realistic production. So if you're noticing the quality of shadows is a little bit kind of rough and pixelated, just come and change your sample size up to maybe three. And this will really help smooth out the shadows. So let me just I'll set it to four. Just let it re-render its interactive. And the best thing about the interactive render, it's really fast. So let me just finish this little quick render and I'll just save this image and we'll compare it to one sample. And I'll just check out how rough it is. So this is one sample and that's four. And really there's no time difference at all. This is still rendering. So very, very fast the renderer. Fantastic. Okay, so let's just close out of here. And this is pretty much your first scene complete there's not really much left to do unless you wanna let's load this back up again so let's just say you wanna actually increase um, some light hitting from the other side so what we could do is just control D duplicate the light and let's just jump into panels and the best thing is when you start to go and change lights through this way it doesn't actually update the interact renderer so you can keep fine-tuning how the lights are getting hit in the scene. So let's just put another little light from this side. Now we have a nice little soft area light. Actually let's kind of create a nice key rim light. And let that update. Let's just jump back to our perspective. And that looks pretty nice. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, the render is finished, and that's your first scene created. Thank you, my name is Kieran Oversapien, and this is White Knight VFX. Um, tune in next time for episode 2, where we'll look further into the Arnold.